So I've had the Nintendo Switch Lite for about a week now and I've been using it regularly every day since I've gotten it. So I think a good week of use is an adequate amount of time when you're doing a review on especially gaming hardware. You can really feel out the console and learn all its nuances and what the differences are between this device as well as its older brother, the original Nintendo Switch. So yeah, in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys my review and impressions. So hopefully guys enjoy. So as you guys are watching this very no frills unboxing experience of the retail packaging of the Nintendo Switch Lite, I do want to give a quick thank you to our friends over at Nintendo of Canada for providing the unit to the channel for review purposes. They're not paying for this video, I just need to let you guys know for transparency's sake. And as you guys can probably tell, it's a really no frills unboxing experience. There's only the console as well as a power cable and a small manual inside the box. It's, uh, it's quick and efficient, which I like. So yeah, that's everything that you get on the inside. All right, so I want to begin the video by talking about some of the features that are missing in the Nintendo Switch Lite that were present in the original Nintendo Switch, the Big Brother Big Boy version. So the first thing that I immediately noticed is that they have removed the auto dim feature. Once again, that is present in the original Nintendo Switch and pretty much any modern day cell phone has this function as well. So it's not a huge deal. You can quickly get to the screen brightness uh, adjuster by holding down the home screen of of the console. And you probably already know this if you're buying a Switch Lite is that you're buying a device, a Nintendo Switch, that no longer has the capability of switching. So you're sacrificing the TV mode as well as the tabletop mode and you're going to be only being able to play on mobile mode on the go with the Joy-Cons permanently attached to the device on once and one sheet of plastic. And one thing just on the note of the Joy-Cons or the analogs and the buttons on this on this device is that on this device the buttons feel like they've swapped over to some sort of membrane system uh, when you press them down they don't have that same clicky feel uh, that the original nintendo switch has so i it feels like the switch buttons are more mechanical whereas with the switch light they've moved over to more of a membrane system and as well just keeping on that vein they've also gotten rid of the rumble or the haptic feedback system uh, so the your console will not rumble as you play. And another thing they've also removed is that they removed the back kickstand so you can no longer natively prop up uh, the Switch by itself on the light version. So you either have to buy a secondary stand or use whatever you can to prop it up if you wanna use apps such as YouTube to watch some sort of video. All right, so let's move on now to what they have added to this light version that wasn't present in the original version. So obviously the biggest thing that everyone will notice right away is that they have moved, uh, they have swapped out the individual four buttons to a proper D-pad on the left hand side, which is a welcome addition since you no longer have to detach the Joy-Cons. A D-pad is much more precise, it's much more functional than just four buttons that are not connected in any sort of way. They've actually raised uh, the bumper buttons up a couple millimeters, which is actually a nice welcome addition. It makes them a bit more satisfying to press and a bit, it just feels better to use them. So when you have both devices side by side, you don't notice immediately that the Switch Lite, obviously given its name and its design, is much smaller than its big brother, the original Nintendo Switch. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the exact specifications. I'll post like a picture right here, giving you guys the exact numbers of how much smaller the screen is as well as how much smaller the actual dimensions of the unit is in comparison to the Switch with its Joy-Cons attached. It's also much lighter. It feels no noticeably lighter to use, which is great for longer play sessions. You have less fatigue. And another physical difference I noticed is that they've actually repositioned and moved the speakers that are on the front. So on the original Nintendo Switch, the speakers were directly underneath the screen. With the Switch Lite, they've actually repositioned them to where cell phones generally have their speakers, which is at the actual bottom of the device. All right, so that's it for the outside. Let's talk about the guts, the inside of the actual device itself. So even though on paper, this device, once again, I'll post the actual numbers for you guys, has a better battery than the original launch Nintendo Switches. It's really not noticeable in terms of real world use. I didn't really notice a tangible difference between the two. That being said, once again, that is in comparison to launch Nintendo Switches. Uh, Nintendo has actually updated the battery as the 
as the lifespan of the Nintendo Switch in this console generation has gone on. And just very quickly, there's something that I wanted to clear up that confused some people as well as made some people very angry from my Nintendo Switch first impressions video that I posted on the channel a couple weeks ago. So under the hood, these two devices have the exact same specs. Uh, they have the same RAM, they have the same CPU, they are exactly in terms of raw power the same uh, hardware on the inside. What I was trying to say in my first impressions video that I posted a couple weeks ago is that it's been proven, it's proven, it's fact, that some games play and function and perform better in dock TV mode. It just makes sense because the device is connected to a steady supply of power. It's just, it's, it's just how it works. Whereas if you're playing in mobile mode without being connected to a power source directly, some games, the performance drops a little, a little bit. All right, so let's move on to the critical section of the review. This is the most fun part. A lot of people, this is why you're here. So let's talk about the changes that I would have made to this device. Let's just say, if I was the president of Nintendo or if I was leading their hardware division, what are the changes that I would have made to this device before launching it? So the first things first, I'm not sure because it's been so long since I've had my original Nintendo Switch and I actually have a glass, tempered glass cover on the screen to protect it. The flex on the screen, even though the screen and touch screen is very responsive, it's very intuitive to use, it has a bit more flex when I press it than I personally would want or feel comfortable having. So I would say it's almost like a must that you get like a tempered glass uh, screen protector for it. Another small thing that I would have appreciated if they could have somehow included with the actual hardware and the outside of the Nintendo Switch is that I would have liked if they would have built in a stylus into the actual case, kind of akin to how they did it with the Nintendo 3DS as well as the Nintendo 2DS, uh, a little touch stylus so you don't have to constantly be touching the screen of your Switch Lite and having to wipe it down on a piece of cloth because it's gonna become a fingerprint mag magnet. And finally, probably the biggest change that I would have recommended and something that I really wish and they did and was disappointed that they didn't do is that I would have moved the charging port of the USB Type-C uh, port from the bottom of the device to the top. Since you no longer have to worry about TV mode or tabletop mode, there really isn't any reason to have the charging port at the bottom of the device. It feels, it would feel much more functional. It'd feel more correct if it was moved to the top, especially if you consider that the headphone jack is at the top of the device as well in its original position. That way, instead of having wires running out from the top and bottom of the device, you have all the wires just running out in one single direction. All right, so let's move on to playing experience. What was it like swapping quickly back and forth between these two devices? Swapping back and forth, I found that I was beginning to enjoy actually using the light version of the Nintendo Switch much more than the original the original version, which is much larger. Um, once again, it's probably because even though it is smaller, it just fits so well in your hands. And over time, the, although it's only a couple, like 0.2 pounds, uh, the lighter device actually makes it just more overall enjoyable to play. So uh, in terms of the mobile experience playing on the go, uh, the Nintendo Switch Lite version definitely in my personal opinion, over long times of playing, prolonged periods of playing, playing video games, it just feels more pleasant to play with the light version. All right, so I wanna finish off the review with some miscellaneous things that I thought that was worth mentioning. One thing that I noticed is that when I wanted to transfer my 80 hour Breath of the Wild save file to my Nintendo Switch, uh, you can only transfer data files locally. There's no cloud saves. You can't download them off the cloud and kind of go uh, where you want uh, with them wherever you want so long as you have a Wi-Fi connection. And as well, once you transfer the data file from one device to another device, it actually deletes the save file uh, from the source device. So you kind of kind of have to constantly be going back and forth. Um, I, it's just, it's, it's a small first world inconvenience, but over time, it does. it is something that you really do notice. And the next thing I find is that it's 2019. It's 2019 and memory and RAM and storage is the cheapest it has ever been, ever. And I kind of find that it's inexcusable 
that the Nintendo Switch Lite still has only 32 gigabytes of storage built into it and 10 or 12 gigabytes is already taken up by just the OS itself so you really only have room for one or two games it makes having to purchase a separate memory card basically a necessity and finishing off with some of the more controversial topics that I need to discuss and bring up so I personally never have experienced this myself. I did not find an example of it to record and show you guys, but online people have pretty much shown uh, through video as well as forums that the infamous Joy-Con drift uh, that has been present in the original Nintendo Switch has been found in the Switch Lite version, which once again, I find is a little bit inexcusable. Nintendo knows about the Joy-Con drift issues and for them to not update their analogs in their newest device is wrong in my personal opinion. Uh, and as well also if you take into account since the controls are built into the actual device on the Switch Lite itself in one piece of plastic um, as if your device worsens with this Joy-Con drift you really have no choice but to either send the device back into Nintendo under warranty to have it repaired or you have to buy a completely new device. Unlike with the original Nintendo Switch, there is no way to just detach and buy new Joy-Cons. And finally, once again, just on the topic of the Joy-Cons, because once again, they do not detach. There are some games out there, especially like party type games like Mario Party or Mario and Sonic at the Olympics that requires you to play the mini games with just one Joy-Con in your hand, there's no way to do so natively with this device. They do give you the option, you can pair uh, separate Joy-Cons to the device through the menu settings. So closing thoughts, so the Nintendo Switch Lite at $200, 100 bucks cheaper, a third off of the original Nintendo Switch is a very enticing proposition if you're a person who plans to only play in mobile mode on the go, your daily commute, on the bus, what have you. It's a really great option at $200. The Switch has a huge variety and a huge library of games. Uh, personally, myself though, if I did not own any of the devices, if like this was the first Switch uh, that I was going to purchase, I would probably most likely pay the extra 100 bucks to retain the functionality of everything else, the TV mode, the tabletop mode. Um, the Joy-Cons themselves are very expensive but, uh, if you tried to buy them separately. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is my final review of the Nintendo Switch Lite. Sorry it took so long to get the review out, but I really do think that it's important to thoroughly test out products, uh, especially electronics, for at least a solid week before you give your final opinions and reviews to your audience. So after a week of use, like I said, it's a fantastic device at hundred bucks cheaper than its bigger brother, a third of the price off. If you're only planning to play on mobile mode, it's a great purchase and a solid buy. And at 200 bucks, it's fairly affordable. So it could possibly make a really good Christmas gift as well. The holidays are just around the corner. Christmas is only three months away. So maybe you will pick up a loved one in Nintendo Switch Lite so they can play and enjoy video games on the go. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you found the video informative if you're on the fence of buying one. If you enjoyed and found the video useful, a thumbs up is always greatly appreciated. And as always, have a fantastic day.